This is the Everything 80s Podcast, Episode 18, The Crazy History of the Happy Meal. Happy! Happy! happy. We're a McDonald's Happy Meal! Uh-huh! That's a regular hamburger! A regular size fries! A regular size soft drink! And a McDonald's brand cookie sampler! McDonald's Happy Meals! And there's more! Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to the Everything 80s Podcast, brought to you by Everything80spodcast.com. I'm Jamie, and we're looking at one of the most iconic fast food items there is, the Happy Meal, and the pretty interesting story that goes in behind all this, and uh, its origins, its creation, how it was marketed, promoted, and the real power that McDonald's has over things like uh, movies and tea. You'll see all this. We'll get to it all in a sec. So we'll get going, but before we start, make sure you subscribe wherever you find your podcast. I should be there. Okay, let's do this. So before we get into it as well, if you want to see the whole show notes for this episode, which is like the full blog, it's got more of the images, videos, everything like that. It's everything80spodcast.com slash 18. If you're listening on YouTube, there should be a link down below so you can see the everything like I'm referencing or talking about and everything like that. So it's, you know, just as a quick summary, the Happy Meal is a form of a kid's meal. It was created in late 1979, but would become part of fast food for the 80s. It was made up of three items and included a toy. And the packaging and the toy for the Happy Meal would soon become a marketing tie-in with TV and movies. And we'll get to all that. So, again, like, if you're a kid who grew up in the 80s, or even now, honestly, like, who hasn't had a Happy Meal at some point? It's a pretty simple process when you were kids screaming for food you'd get a hamburger or chicken nuggets fries and a drink and there was a toy in there so the toys started out quite simple and then became huge collections that would take forever to get Uh, mcdonald's then realized they could start some great marketing tie-ins with whatever movie was going on to that would be a big hit with kids that year and that you know, might lead to some some mistakes we'll get to. So here's the whole history and the story of the fast food juggernaut that took over our lives as kids. So the crazy thing I learned in researching all this is that the Happy Meal actually, even though it's a giant commercial conglomerate um, creation for, you know, maximizing obviously enormous profits and exploiting kids and toys and fast food and junk food it actually has roots in a desire to help mothers and was not thought up by some stooge sitting in a boardroom thinking how they could capitalize on on kids and and addicting foods and toys they that they crave so the story starts in the mid 70s with a woman named yolanda fernandez de cofino and she lived in guatemala And her and her husband operated several McDonald's down there. So Yolanda was very aware of the number of young mothers that she saw coming into her restaurants. And she knew the challenges that they faced with raising young kids. So noticing how difficult it could be for a mother to feed screaming kids, she came up with the menu Ronald or the Ronald menu. This was a meal that offered a hamburger, fries, and a small sundae as a way for these mothers to more effectively feed their children. Somehow, and it's it's really not sure how, the idea eventually was brought to the at- attention of the McDonald's management in Chicago. I don't know how it got from Guatemala to to there, but they were they picked up and were aware of this idea. And this is how now cereal helps to influence the modern Happy Meal. So the whole the concept of the happy meal like it wasn't called the happy meal yet but with this whole ronald menu thing it was turned over to a guy named bob bernstein and bernstein is the guy who developed the concept uh into the happy meal that we know now he was a consultant for mcdonald's and would regularly meet with owners of mcdonald's they would go over all things related to customer experience and things like that. But the big one that would come up from all these clients was how they could create a better experience for families with kids. It seems, I mean, now we associate McDonald's with families and kids, but that wasn't the case going into the eighties, you know, the late seventies 
and into the 80s that they really wanted to capitalize on this. So up until the Happy Meal, if you watch kids in a restaurant, whether it be fast food or a regular one, kids would often pick at their parents' meals. It's again, weird to think about, but kids' menus in general were not a big thing yet. And it's hard to think of any form of food service that doesn't cater to kids' picky requests now with having... Um, you know, just from simply like giving them play mats and crayons to start with and specific kids meals. This really was, I think it's because we were the last generation. If you grew up then, we were like the last um, generation before kids started becoming special and becoming cared about. And we were kind of <laughs> thrown to the side a bit. So all these things that are commonplace now weren't then. And all these franchisees and owner owners of McDonald's wanted to know how they could, you know, get the families in there and how they could keep kids and keep everyone happy. So this is 1977 and the idea passed on from that. They picked up from Guatemala somehow was seeming like a good idea. Why couldn't you just package a kid specific meal? You know, it's always those simple ideas that are the most effective. This was McDonald's though. And it wasn't as simple as just throwing some food together. You had to think about branding and the whole McDonald's experience. So Bernstein made note of when he ate, breakfast with his son that his son would spend the whole meal reading the back of the cereal box i assume you did that too this is something i forgot was a thing that was like our morning that was like your morning newspaper when you were a kid it was reading the cereal box because there was so much stuff on there Um, it was designed to entertain and distract you so bernstein wanted to take this concept and bring it into kids meals so the idea that yolanda has is you know, great, but it's the packaging that was really the key to the whole um, progression of the Happy Meal. So here's looking now at developing the Happy Meal packaging. Bernstein would call in his creative team to start working on mock-ups for the kids' meal packaging. His team would use some paperboard boxes and had the idea to form them similar to a lunch pail. This would look familiar to kids, and they also had the smart idea that they could turn the handles into golden arches to carry it. So perfect opportunities for branding whenever possible. So you've now got a four-sided box and it's got a lot of real estate to cover with kid-friendly content. So they called in some nationally known children's illustrators and told them they basically had a blank slate to create whatever they wanted on the box's sides. They could use any ideas they wanted. Like it could be jokes, it could be art, it could be games, comic strips, anything that was going to look similar to the cereal box experience that all kids knew from the breakfast table. The comic strips they would use would, they, they could be like cartoony, they could be fantasy, whatever that would appeal to a kid. So each box had to, had, had, had to have eight different items on the tops and the sides to keep kids interested. The food content stayed pretty simple. They would include a burger, small fries, but instead of a small sundae, a package of cookies was put in as that was seen as a less messy option. And I have to agree with that there. The meal would also come with a small drink and Bernstein would call it the Happy Meal. So it's got its name, but now they got to launch this thing. So they wasted no time in getting the Happy Meal into our dirty little hands as McDonald's was pretty certain they had a they had developed a very good idea here. So they started to roll out commercials and radio ads for the Happy Meal in October 1977. And is the case with a lot of specialty food items or fast food or whatever. They started with a test market and that was in Kansas City to kind of fine tune everything with the marketing. They not that they are the originators of this, but McDonald's was very smart on working out the kinks and using a test market before going nationwide with like a new launch or new product or whatever. So they then slowly introduced it into other markets and then had a full nationwide rollout roll, roll that happened at the end of 1979 to get this thing all ready to go into the 80s. The first Happy Meal was a circus wagon theme and contained one of six different toys. So those first six toys were a McDoodler stencil, a McWrist wallet, an ID bracelet, a puzzle lock, a spinning top, and a McDonald Land character eraser. So you see how they're very quaint type toys, like, you know, compared to now what you picture and what we'll get to as far as promotional tie-ins. They, they were very simple things, like kind of just little novelty kind of dime store items that you would just um, 
pick up for nothing at, at, like at the counter of a variety store or something like that. So now the Happy Meal has to evolve. And giving away like you know giving away a toy with food was clearly not not McDonald's idea, but they packaged it up very nicely. Before the Happy Meal, I don't know if you remember this, and I don't know if they still do this. I remember vaguely, but they did the treat of the week. Do you remember that? The toy would change weekly, but with the Happy, so like you knew exactly what was going to be in there, but with the Happy Meal, it was a surprise to find out what you were going to get. And I think this is a big part of the appeal with the Happy Meal. Each box you get is different, and that appeals to kids. It's like, it's a big, like, you know, the food you're going to get, but anything like, that's a surprise or novelty or something you're you don't know what's going to come with i think that's a very big draw especially for kids they were you know the kids are going to feel unique and special with what they were getting everyone was getting something different and it was something to compare or something like as a point of pride i have this you don't whatever it it, it made every kid kind of connect to something like the happy meal very well so like i said the, the toys start off simple and cheap but became much more complex and McDonald's didn't wait to have a tie-in promotion. I don't know if this, this must've been in the back of their heads the whole time, but in 1979 and into 1980, right when the happy meal came out, they released the star Trek meal. So this was to, to promote star Trek, the motion picture in December of 1979 and January of 1980, the packaging used for the star Trek meal was made up of various images from the movie contained some games and different images Again, go in the show notes, everything 80 podcastcom slash 18. I've got the links for like the original commercials, um, like the YouTube clips for how they promoted it and everything like that. So there was also on the box a comic strip adaptation of the movie, and they realized an ingenious device early on with one of these first launches. They would introduce a set of toys that you would need to collect all of to complete the set. This way, kids would be wanting to come back to get more Happy Meals to get that missing toy. So, um, yeah, perfect. Whereas those first six toys they released were just individual, whatever. Then it became about the set and collecting all. You remember, whatever, collect all four, collect all six. That would kind of involve to like collect all 50, you know. But at the time, this was seen as the ideal way to get kids back into the restaurant. And nerds, too, who are collecting Star Trek stuff. Okay, so now it's going to evolve into the biggest advancement that happens with the Happy Meal. And this is in 1987 when McDonald's first introduced a McDonald's Disney Happy Meal. Now you've got the perfect storm of two huge enterprises coming together over some deep fried food. Disney has thrown pretty much every cartoon entity at the Happy Meal, including like, with things you probably don't even remember or haven't even seen. So like they've done... Mickey Mouse one, Cinderella, Aladdin. They've done obviously like The Lion King, Finding Nemo, 101 Dalmatians, everything. And, and like and then obviously why stop there? McDonald's opens the floodgates up, uh, floodgates up with every other property they could get their hands on. So you've seen and again it depends how much you frequented McDonald's, but at some point whether you've seen it or not, they've done times with Transformers. And like this is in the 80s now. Hello Kitty, GI Joe, they did Lego. They did Barbie. They did Hot Wheels. They would get into going into the 90s. They would do in 2000s. They would do like Teletubbies. They and you probably recall that the Beanie Baby craze of the 90s. This would also be a big part of the Happy Meal and McDonald's. And they put out, if you probably remember, the miniature versions of the crazy popular stuff, Beanie Babies. They ended up selling a hundred million of those things. And they would keep offering them annually. And they would even offer like Beanie versions of the McDonald's characters like Ronald and Grimace and Birdie and the Hamburglar. So like I mentioned the eighties toys and I assume you remember these very well as I do. And see, here's some of the, I mean, this is probably the golden age of the happy meal toys as now they're starting to incorporate like all the different cartoons and characters we already knew um, and love. So here's a few of the standouts. The Muppet Babies, probably I probably think the best McDonald's Happy Meal toy. That's from 1987. They did the Garfield vehicles. That was from 1989. They did Ducktail figures from 1988. They did. I remember these the Fraggle Rock ones from 1988. The, the, the Berenstein Bears in 1986. There was the Chippendale Rescue Ranger cars, 1989. The Fry Kids. Remember those individual ones? That was 1989. 
the classic McDonald's pullback race cars, 1985. And then the very popular McNugget Buddies. Remember those? That was from 1988. Okay, so talking about promotional tie-ins and and licensing other um, products and creations and intellectual properties and all that sort of stuff. So now comes the issue with how McDonald's would tie in anything pretty much and how this led to some problems with the Batman franchise and Tim Burton. So McDonald's is just, you know, seeing dollar signs everywhere they go and their lizard brains jump at just anything or any movie property that wants to do a promotional tie in with Happy Meal. They really, they don't even really care, whatever. If it's on the screen, we'll tie it in. And this goes into Batman Returns, which was the sequel to the obviously massively popular Batman, the original one, directed by Tim Burton. So kids love Batman. Kids love superheroes. What could possibly go wrong? If you're remotely familiar with the story, you know where this goes. Because, I mean, the story of Batman is a pretty dark one already. If you think, like, a kid seeing his parents murdered in front of him and then he tur- turns into a vigilante vigilante to take down all crime... And and the first Batman's obviously a classic and amazing, you know, Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson and amazing performances and just sort of establishing like the, sort of what modern comic book movies could be. But things get kind of weird in Batman Returns. And I think Batman Returns is an amazing movie. And it was kind of more in line with like what Tim Burton wanted to actually make. And there's a lot of, if you've watched that recently, there's a lot of, dark stuff in that thing you've got a sex crazed penguin man who's trying to kill all the little kids in the city and then besides that you've got a ton of death along the way you've got people being thrown out of buildings and electrocuted to death and it was this super dark tone that tim burton really was was going for obviously is not going to mesh well with the bright and happy yellow and red motif of McDonald's. So before it was uh, Batman Returns was even finished, Burton was arguing over the censors over the movie and was actually cutting out scenes and extra violence to bring it down to a PG-13 rating. He wanted to have an R rating, and it was originally proposed to be an R-rated movie, which would obviously limit um, the kids that would be able to see it. So he had to cut out a lot of stuff. Like, There's a lot of dark things that are still in there. He had to cut out a lot to get it down to that PG-13 rating. So they're going through all these different cuts and whatever. And the final version is still up in the air. And McDonald's only got to see a very rough cut. And I they just weren't sure what the movie was going to end up being. So either way, they sign a deal. And they start marketing this family-friendly film with their food and their happy meals and their toys and they tie it all in. So I don't know what, whether it's all the stuff with the penguin penguin and the plan to kill the firstborn or Michelle Pfeiffer being trying to be murdered, thrown out of the building. It was definitely not a family friendly movie. And um, parents start complaining about how the movie was completely unsuitable for children. Uh, They, you know, they're seeing this thing promoted, in commercials and they you can only so, show so much in an advertisement and it, they can still make it look really good. And then it's being tied in with all these McDonald's commercials the kids are seeing. So the kids naturally want to go see this movie with the toys that they're buying and going to get. So the parents are taking kids to Batman Returns and losing their crap. So McDonald's flips out. And according to Tim Burton, he's like, I think I upset McDonald's. They asked, what's the black stuff coming out of the penguin's mouth? We can't sell Happy Meals with that. So, I mean, the original Batman in general wasn't intended for children, but this all gets way out of hand when Batman returns. And ultimately, it's McDonald's fault for not being more involved with what they market. But it was way too late as people, like parents are pissed. And here's um, a quote from one angry parent. Violence-loving adults may enjoy this film, but why on earth is McDonald's pushing this exploitative movie through the sales of its so-called Happy Meals? Has McDonald no conscience? I would say no, they don't. Not at all. Even on a good day, I don't think McDonald's has a conscience or anything like that. But they really, it all got really phoned in with Batman Returns and the Happy Meal marketing tie-in. So 
McDonald's is pissed. Warner Brothers are pissed that McDonald's is pissed. And Tim Burton is caught right, caught right in the middle of the crossfire here. So the Happy Meal Batman Returns debacle is seen as the start of what got Tim Burton removed from the franchise he had started. And the Batman movies went to absolute crap until Christopher Nolan um, took over them after. So like, you remember the, like, I mean, the, after Batman Returns, they went into the movies like uh, Batman and Robin. And then, you know, with Mr. Freeze and when Jim Carrey's playing, um, see the Riddler and that and Tommy Lee Jones is two face. And they start taking on this like really campy sort of um, cartoony effect which was way different than what Tim Burton was doing so this is pretty much McDonald's now dictating how these movies are going to go because of how important the marketing tie-in was to the studios and like with Warner Brothers and stuff like that so not only is Tim Burton out they changed the direction of these whole movies and they're just so like remember I forget which one it is it's probably Batman and Robin or Batman for whatever when um, there's the rollerblading army that's coming through with um, Dr. Freeze and when Arnold Schwarzenegger's playing them and they're all skating with like hockey sticks and they're just so like over the top, but it's because McDonald's is kind of controlling that these movies have to be kind of dumbed down and family eyes and kid eyes so that they can sell all their crap and their toys to them. And this also carries over, um, you know, now they're McDonald's is much more proactive with the toys and movies they're going to market with Happy Meal. They're now going over entire scripts. Not only they're doing with, um, is it Joel Schumacher did those ones? Yeah, I think so. They actually are now dictating how other films are going besides those ones that their first time was. So it was said that McDonald's demanded that Steven Spielberg tone down some of the violent scenes in the very first Jurassic Park before they would sign up for it. Um, they, they had that much power that they could change the direction Steven Spielberg had with one of the, like the biggest movies of all time. That's how important those marketing tie-ins in tie-ins are and how powerful McDonald's is. It's, I mean, commerce is probably always going to trump art. And I don't know. I found it funny. You think McDonald's would have been a bit more understanding with the Batman thing since they use one of the creepiest clowns in existence too. So, we can't mention the Happy Meal without a mention of the whole nutrition issue. Um, as the 80s is a, an interesting time when fast food and processed food really starts to get out of control. And n- there's not a direct causation between these things. It's more of a correlation. But in the 1980s with the the prominence of larger sized drinks and high fructose corn syrup and more fast food and more fast food items, more junk food available and more it's affordable and cheaper and geared and marketed towards kids. You see an immediate rise in the obesity levels. The 1980s is seen when that starts to take off. Everyone's kind of like weight stable as a society going into the seventies and the eighties, everything just like takes off as far as that, as far as more incidences of, uh, of heart disease and diabetes and obesity and everything like that. So, I mean, you can't always make a direct connection, but they all seem to happen at the same time into the 1980s. And McDonald's has always been criticized over the quality of their food. I, I get that, obviously. But at the same time, they've never pretended to be anything other than fast food until recently now when they're starting – um, as they're dropping down and McDonald's is like not the king of the heap anymore as far as, as, as fast food in general, but in any form of dining out. And, you know, now they're offering things like kale salads and, and whatever. But, um, you know, through the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, like they, their focus is just on fast food. When you're going hungover as hell to McDonald's, you know exactly why you're going in there. It, it's not to get something healthy. You know the deal. Everyone knows the deal. So, when it comes to the Happy Meal, though, changes have had to take place over the years. But not a lot has changed with the Happy Meal. They actually they only they added chicken nuggets in 1983, and they started to introduce little cartons of one percent milk. In 2011, they started to to make the changes, and they started at, offering the apple slices with the low fat caramel dip, and they also reduced the portion of the fries to 1.1 ounces. But even With the smaller portions, there's a lot of crap that goes into those meals. A cheeseburger with fries and a chocolate milk contains almost 700 calories. 
27 grams of fat and an amazing 1,046 milligrams of sodium. Adding the apple slices and reducing the fry serving um, may, though, not be a, a proactive, we're trying to do what's best for you, but actually it seems to be because of what happened in 2010. So on November 2nd, 2010, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors passed a law that children's meals sold in restaurants had to meet a certain minimal nutrition requirement before they could be sold with toys. That this was a way they hoped to cut down on childhood obesity, which is, you know, coming rampant out of the 80s and 90s. So toys could be included in meals that had 600 calories or less and less than 640 milligrams of sodium. The meal would also have to include fruits and vegetables and beverages without an excess of sugar and fat. Sounds pretty good, right? Pretty good at McDonald's to do that. Except those proactive aces at McDonald's were able to circumvent that law by charging 10 cents for the toys, which is basically just screw you kids. The state of California filed a class action lawsuit in 2010 to ban Happy Meal toys, but the suit was dismissed in 2012. Just this one little step. I don't know if you remember this, if you ate McDonald's at that time or whatever, when you had to add in the 10 cents for the toy, that changed the whole dynamic of the Happy Meal. And it didn't fall into that category of law that the children's meal sold had to meet that certain minimal nutrition requirement if they came with a toy because they didn't come with a toy. You were buying the toy absolute bastards these people but okay so we'll start wrapping up here with the legacy of the happy meal and again like when i call it the crazy history of the happy meal it really is and you probably didn't think this little box caused so many issues but either way it it, you know it made its mark the minute it burst on the scene in the 80s and we all came to know it and love it in some aspect it was it really is a great combination when you look back at it at the time of getting to have fast food, but getting a surprise and a toy all at once. And that's some powerful stuff. And it's made a lot of people lifelong consumers of McDonald's. We at least can remember the good feelings of being there for something we weren't normally going to get to eat. It was, it was a treat. And it's, you know, why McDonald's add in the playlands. They want their restaurants to be associated with fun and happy feelings. And you carry those into adulthood and you become a lifelong customer. It was also, it was fun to collect all six of a certain thing. And like I said, I think my favorite are definitely those Muppet Babies toys and those pullback cars that still stand out in my mind. So, you know, there's no stopping the Happy Meal at this point. It's too much of a heavyweight when it comes to marketing and promotion. And McDonald's reportedly spends more money advertising the Happy Meal to kids than to than they, they spend on adults and teens combined. That's how important this thing is to the bottom line. So at the end of the day, giant corporations like this dictate a lot of our spending. But when you look back at the history of the Happy Meal, it at least had some very humble and noble beginnings and it was a very simple thing when it when it came out in the 80s. And like, you know, like all things, they sort of evolve and progress into something different than they intended to be. But it, it's something we remember fondly in its in its kind of primitive form. So I'll wrap it up there. Also, check your closet if you have any of those McDonald's Beanie Babies, because those are worth serious money today. <laughs> OK, I'll wrap it up here. Again, thanks for listening. I know there's a lot of podcasts out there. So just the fact you're taking the time to listen to this one means a lot. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That makes sure you get the shows automatically sent to you. I'm going to call it a day here. Thanks for listening. See you on the next one.